talking about the skeletal system and we've been discussing the functions of bones. So far, we've reviewed the idea that bones, of course, allow us to walk around. They give the body structure and they interact with the muscles of our body uh, to allow us to move and lift things and stuff. We uh, also reviewed the idea that um, your bones are there also to protect some of your internal organs, like the skull protects the brain and the ribs and sternum protect the heart and lungs. Uh, and then we spoke about mineral homeostasis. And we said that the bones is your body's way of storing extra calcium and phosphorus. That's where we put it for when we need it. And we need calcium for every beat of the heart, for every twitch of every muscle. And we need phosphorus to make DNA and RNA. Now we've gotten to the point of hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis means the birth of blood cells. In your blood, there are two different types of cells, kind of three. Uh, there are red blood cells. Uh, we will talk about them when we get to blood. And red blood cells carry oxygen. White blood cells, white blood cells defend you against bacteria and cancer and viruses. And then platelets. Platelets, technically not cells, fragments of cells, but all of these are born inside of your bones. And where inside of your bones? Well, now would be a good time for us to uh, look at the structure of a typical long bone. You know, in, uh, in anatomy, anatomists, they like to classify things into groups and uh, some bones are considered long bones, some are short bones, some are flat bones or regular bones. Anyway, a when you think of a bone like the humerus or the radius or the ulna, you're usually thinking of what is technically a long bone. Let's look at the typical structure of a long bone. Well, all the way around the outside, all the way around the outside, nope, that's not what I meant to do. All the way around the outside, all of this, that is all compact bone. Bones are made out of two different kinds of bone tissue. If you're on an exam or a quiz and you're like, what kind of bone tissue is this? You got a 50-50 chance because there's compact bone and then there's spongy bone. So compact bone is the stuff that kind of almost looks like plastic and it goes all the way around the outside of the bone. So you can see it right there, compact bone. And this bone that looks like sponge is called spongy bone. Now, this is an image from your textbook. So while we're here, I wanna make a point of saying something that, that they label this as spongy bone and then here they say space containing red marrow. I think that's confusing. All of the bone that looks like sponge is spongy bone. So all of this area, that is spongy bone. Sorry. All of that is spongy bone. The reason they say that that area has got space containing red marrow is all the little spaces in that sponge that is the spongy bone. That is where a different tissue called red marrow lives. And the only job that red marrow has is to multiply and make red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So when we say that bones build your blood cells or hematopoiesis, it's really that bones kind of serve as the framework for the tissue that makes blood cells, right? Now, there's also this area called the central cavity or the medullary cavity. This central area that's kind of, sorry, you can't see my finger pointing at things, can you? <laughs> All right, this central area here, uh, that is called the central cavity or the medullary cavity. And it's basically empty um, when the bone is dead. But when it was alive, there were blood vessels there and you store a special kind of fat called yellow marrow there. So I don't know if you've got a mom or a grandma that makes soups or beans or uh, stews. 
and throws in a ham hock. And you're like, why are you throwing in the big chunk of bone? And the reason is that the yellow marrow that's here and the red marrow that's there, those add flavor to, uh, to culinary creations. Let's see, what else do we need to know about long bone structure? Long bones have got ends. This end is closer to the body, so it's called, pro called proximal. The proximal what? The ends of long bones, each one is called an epiphysis. I know it looks like epiphysis, but epiphysis. This is the distal epiphysis. Uh, so this end of the bone is called an epiphysis. At the end of each epiphysis, there's going to be a joint. And so there's going to be a little bit of hyaline cartilage. The hyaline cartilage that is part of a joint gets known as the articular cartilage because a joint is called an articulation. Um, uh, let's see, all of this thing that's kind of the shaft of the bone, that is called the diaphysis, the diaphysis. What else should you know? You should know this. You should know that there's like this thick, tough, kind of connective-like tissue that is shrink-wrapped onto an entire bone, and it is known as the periosteum. The periosteum is an important thing. Um, if you are someone who eats meat, then you probably have run into the periosteum. If you've ever been eating spare ribs, and you're like chewing them all the way down to the bone. And there'll be this like tough, like saran wrap thing that peels off, that is periosteum. And the periosteum, that is how your bones grow thicker, right? When you were a baby, your, your femur was like, like that big. And now your femur is like, oh, that big. And the reason your femur got thicker was it grew from the cells of the periosteum. All right, spongy bone, let's see. Oh, I already did this. So epiphysis we know, distal, farther from the body, proximal, the one closer to the body. Diaphysis, that's kind of the shaft of the bone. We know compact bone and spongy bone, roger that. Articular cartilage is the name for the type of hyaline cartilage that is right here at the joint surfaces. Those are the medial condyle of the femur and the lateral condyle of the femur. The periosteum, that's how the bone grows in thickness. It's like shrink wrapped connective tissue around it. Medullary cavity in the center filled with yellow marrow. Terrific, right? So the cop gives me a ticket for driving in the carpal lane, carpal, carpal bones. And then you see that looks like a humerus, right? And that, that's a radius and an ulna, right? I thought you said this guy was funny. I said humorous. See, now you are officially a nerd because you understood that joke. Now we're going to talk about what's actually going on in those bones. Okay, great. We know the parts. You'll be learning lots of bone names in lab. But what's going on in there? I told you that the bones were alive. Bones are connective tissues. We know that. We know that connective tissues will have cells that are very widely separated from each other. So here is a cell right, right there. And here are its little skinny arms reaching out. Everything that's kind of in that lighter pinkish color, all of that is hard uh, calcium phosphorus matrix that is outside of a living cell. The living cell will be this little guy here with his long skinny arms. And you'll see that the long skinny arms are reaching out to touch his friends. But they are separated from each other by all of this matrix stuff. All of that lighter pink stuff is matrix. I need you to know the names of the three most abundant bone cells. Let's start with the ones that I drew in blue. Those ones that I drew in blue are called osteocytes. The osteocytes, osteo means bone, site means cell. Osteocyte really seems, means bone cell. Um, the osteocytes, they are sensory cells in, in this regard. 
they have got their long skinny arms reaching through this pale pink dead calcium phosphorus matrix. But if you are using your bones a lot because you're really putting a lot of weight on them because you're doing a heavy squat or something like that, these cells, the ones that I outlined in blue, those are the cells that go, wow, they're really using the bone a lot. And when that happens, they will call out for reinforcements. They will say, hey, we're using the bone a lot. Please come make it stronger, right? So the osteocytes, they maintain the bone and they sense the stresses on the bone. Now, where did osteocytes come from? When osteocytes were young and foolish, they were osteoblasts. And osteoblasts build new bone right? So usually I act this out in lecture. I don't know what to do when I'm just sitting here. Osteocytes build bone. So here's what happened. There were a bunch of osteoblasts. And osteoblasts, they were all like barely touching fingerprints, fingertips. And they said to each other, hey guys, Let's build some bone matrix. And everyone says, sounds great. I got nothing better to do. So they were a big old circle of osteoblasts. And they started building matrix. When they built the matrix, they exocytosed it. Now you know what that is. And as they exocytosed it, calcium and phosphorus got added to it. And so then after a little bit, one osteoblast said to the other, hey guys, have you noticed that we're kind of stuck in concrete that we made? And everyone went, oh, bummer, we're stuck. Yeah, bummer, that's an old person's word. It means uh, bad, okay. <laughs> and, and so then they were stuck and they got stuck inside of the bone matrix that they made. Being stuck inside of that bone matrix, they had to make a decision. And so the osteoblasts at that point decide to become osteocytes. Once, they're, once they build the bone matrix, then they're stuck in the bone matrix, then they change their identity and they go from building bone to monitoring and maintaining the bone, okay? So these two guys, osteoblasts and osteocytes, they're related to each other. These guys are totally different. The osteoclasts, osteoclasts chew up bone. C for class, C for chew up. They chew up the bone. Why? Why would we want them to do that? Well, here's one reason that we see right here. If there is an area of the bone that has been damaged, then these osteocytes that live there will go, wow, you know, that bone has gotten really old. It's got really crumbly. We really need to replace it. Well, just like old bricks and an old brick wall that have gotten crumbly, the way you replace them is you take out the old stuff, clean it up, and then you put in new. So who cleans out the old crumbly stuff? The osteoclasts do. Once the osteoclasts have cleaned out the old crumbled up bone, then the osteoblasts go in and build new put new bone there and then they get stuck and then they become osteocytes and maintain the bone that they built. So three kinds of bone cells. The three kinds of bone cells are the osteoblasts that build it in the first place, the osteocytes that those osteoblasts turn into, and once they've turned into osteocytes, they're busy maintaining it and monitoring it and checking for damage and how much it's getting used. And then there are osteoclasts that come in and they rip out damaged bones so that the new osteoblasts can come in and build new bone. Now, actually, during your entire life, during your whole life, your cells are constantly tearing apart little bits of your bone and rebuilding it. So when you are let's say 21, you're probably completely done growing. And you might think, okay, these are my bones. These are my bones for the rest of my life, right? Not really. Because if I were to label some little chunk of your bone right now and come back 10 years from now, 
that's gone. The bones you have now and the bones you have 10 years from now, no, it, no part of it is the same. The cells have all changed, the calcium and phosphorus have all changed, everything has changed. And um, the way it changed was just a little bit at a time. It's kind of like the entire campus at Cerritos. Let's imagine all the bone, all the buildings are made out of brick, but like every week, one wall gets taken down by the osteoclasts, and then new osteoblasts come in and build a new wall, and then osteocytes stay and monitor the wall. And over the course of a decade, all of the buildings, they look the same, but they're all completely out of new material. Okay, we're going to pick up here at the beginning of the next lecture.